All right, so we're still surviving. I actually have been stealing food from the wolves. The wolves have been killing deer, and I've just been running in and grabbing the deer bodies. <laughs> That's been pretty funny. Wolves have been doing all the hunting for me. So the clay area is ready. However, we had a cold snap, and it's really cold, so I'm not going to move people until the beginning of spring. But I got enough for four, four places now. And what I'm probably going to do is put two beds per room um, and put some clay uh, brazers in there. So we can just kind of take a peek real quick. We can make wooden beds. We can make infirmary beds. Um, what I did is I had everyone sleeping in this one area with a bunch of, you know, warmth. Now this has better in... Sorry. This has better insulation, this clay. But it's going to get cold. We're probably going to need two brazers per room. They take sticks. I'm not really worried. And they only use these when it's cold enough. They don't run this stuff all the time. You don't really have to worry too much. Um, figure. Like where, where beds would probably be most reasonable. I think two people to a room is pretty good. Um, we could probably do a bed. Two beds here and then clay brazers at the end um it's not too too bad so let's let's start it off um winter is almost over so let's just get one room ready how's that sound yeah that sounds good to me and um i know i, I eventually want to really start working on uh, the library next because we have so many bookshelves where are the books uh, all these books can be put into bookshelves which give a bonus to the library room. But this is a pretty easy one. And winter is like two days away. So, yeah, we've been surviving pretty easy just on hunting. But we have hunted <laughs> pretty much all the animals to extinction. Um, but they, they seem to keep coming back. I don't like to hunt the baby deer. They, we need them. But this is basically what I'm going to do per room. Just put up two brazers and two beds. And with the insulation bonus, that should help. Uh, I, it is good to have a roof. You'll notice that the floor gets 0. 0.8 versus uh, 0. 0.85. And that's not entirely bad, but I think roofs get better insulation. All right, cool. So this is now a room. Boom. Shared chamber instead of an individual chamber. But this thing is going to, yeah, 49 degrees. So if I do that for all of these, we'll have enough space for an extra person. And everybody will have a good environment. So, it, you know what? Screw it. Uh, the cold snap is over, so I think we can get away with it. We got the windows. And we just need a bunch of clay. The water is causing lag issues occasionally, and it's kind of annoying me. Um, but there's really not much I can do until... Uh, I'm... What I'm gonna do is turn it into a, a waterfall, and that will you can you can layer the water dropping in a way that uh, doesn't do that. Cool. So now we have shared rooms for everybody. We get the clay brazers, and then I can get rid of the the rat den I have up here. And then we'll relocate one of these down here into the the hall room, keep it warm. But there you go. That's uh, that's it. That's all you have to do. The water is starting to slightly build up, but not really. But yeah, we could fix this pretty easily. Unfortunately, if I can, if I could get a uh, wooden wall from here all the way over here, and then a wooden wall all the way over here. I can turn this around into a waterfall. I think I'm just going to do it out of wood for now because the dirt isn't working the way I wanted it to. Cut down these trees, cut down these trees. But yeah, you can see that um, it's not, uh, not having the same impact anymore. But it's not too much of a threat. It would have flood it would have half flooded the base though. Had I not had the wall up. You see, they'll swim over. And they'll construct it. Woo! 
Got ourselves a little waterfall. That sucks that he failed. Um, but yeah, if we build this great little barrier, we might be able to fix this. And that would be really nice. Because what it will do is it will push it this way. Um, and I need to push it a little bit more. But once it goes down a level, then it becomes a waterfall. So then it can only fill the layer below me instead of the layer right here that I'm on. Um, and that's great. Um, it does actually look like crap. That looks like I'll have to do it this way around this uh, little valley thing. It needs to fall off flat like that. That will do it. That will give it that one tile down gap. Um, and that will that will fix all the problems. Yeah, I think we could do it like this too. It has something to do with the way that it's clipping. And it's causing a lot of issues now. All right, here's the, the crowning achievement. This should actually really do it. That should be shipped. There we go. So you can see we got it to waterfall. So this whole section here should stop. And it is. It's dying down. And now we've got it to waterfall. So if I can get it right, once it waterfalls, it um it kind of stays in a, in a path. I could even w do it one more time. Yep. Once we get this, then it become then it goes off the edge there. There we go. Now it's gonna flood the valley that I'm on. I can channel to one more valley, then it we will get it out of our our way. There we go. That's the last part. Once I do that, then we're in good shape. What a freaking journey, though. Try to survive the flooding. All right, and you can see here that we have actually finally contained everything. And this was an absurd challenge, but it got rid of the stuttering. I was actually having some issues with the graphics stuttering like crazy. And now we're actually going to be getting out the early game defensive towers. I finally got all of the walls completed. So now I'm just getting up where we're going to be putting these stone towers. And we're just going to make them um, just a little bit. Looks like uh, six by six towers. And this is going to be the first gateway, not the full gateway. The full gateway is going to probably be a little bit longer um, with a platform at the end. But I'm going to be using window units for the towers because they actually do a really good job of narrowing. It's a pro and a con because the window units kind of narrow how many units you can hit but they also narrow how many units can hit you and provide defense so it kind of gives you like one person per one person hits and so if you can out damage them and they can't hit you i actually have found through combat that it does ridiculously well and i have a couple examples of that that will be in the future i'm actually dubbing over a ton of gameplay this is the terraforming session. So this terraforming session took me around hmm, 12 hours and I clipped the best parts to kind of show you everything that's going on. I wanted to show you basic progress. We haven't built out very much of the castle in this. It's mostly just terraforming things out. But yes, you can see we're going to have an inner courtyard area with doors. And what I'm hoping to do is have windows on the inside area so that they can shoot down. And you will actually see that how I place this allows them to shoot out the windows at things coming and shoot out the side windows without moving uh, with things that are in the side. So it's pretty sweet. We're going to have one person per window and on top we're going to have a pretty badass area where they can just kind of sit around and um, it depends on how many people I get. I You can get a lot of people in this game. But the thing that you have to take in consideration is the fact that the more people you have, uh, the, the bigger the rates. So we're going to do these at three stories. And we're going to have three stories worth of towers going up. And hopefully now that we have the whole walls up, they will only come towards this area. Right now I do have doors on the sides of the base, however. These doors will eventually be removed. Um, I'm going to just be storing thousands upon thousands of limestone and clay inside the walls that we can use to later build the base out. I won't be doing big base building until 
uh, the moat is ready and everything is inside. So this is a pretty, you know, crazy stage of development for this because of this reason. Okay, and then now we're starting to get the early perimeter out and done with the massive, massive water moat. This is the part that took the most. It's just a ton of digging, a ton of putting down soil and spots. I'm going to get it perfectly level. I want this to look as good as possible. This actually took quite a bit of time, and you can see that the towers are now getting up a little bit and they look pretty awesome uh the end in game of this is very far away this is just a fraction of what it is going to look like so you can see this is the design now the window sill units actually do really really well at blocking shots and they make it so that you can only shoot a person inside that window if you can see in it so they're actually better than the other defenses um, for that reason, when you're facing off against 20 archers, they can only shoot one or two people and they have to be within view of your archers. So I actually found I was able to take on raids really well using these windowsill units. All right. And we're getting more of a built. You can see right now it's looking pretty good. Yeah, like I said, I'm just building out this massive dumping stockpile to store all the limestone and clay that we're going to use to build a space because once we get this mud up, it's going to be a little bit harder to get outside. So I'm just mass storing all the materials we're going to use to build the entire base. But I'm not going to build the base until the Let's Plays resume. Right now, I'm just getting the mode out. But as you can see, I'm getting raided here and there, but the early game defenses are still holding up pretty well. I'm just using my over superior archers to suppress all their archer units it's a it's a pretty good setup i have a lot of really good people now i'm getting a lot of people that have just been randomly coming in and i was thinking about introducing all of them but i think what i'm going to do is in the next let's play just go through everybody that came in rather than just like randomly um talking about them as they came in because you know of course as i was playing and terraforming i kept having more and more people coming in and i definitely get them outfitted and geared up and i have not built out the residentials for everybody and that's going to be part of future let's plays right now like i said we we're just focusing on building this moat and i mean we're talking yikes probably maybe a thousand or so uh, things that have to be mined to build it but yeah the the defenses hold up really well and once we get everybody in shape and I had a guy in the pit that you can see here I had to sally out with my men to make sure that they didn't start messing them up in that pit it's one of the the drawbacks of terraforming is sometimes they will dig underneath them and then fall into the hole so I had to make staircases down into the areas and it, it was a big problem but the defenses are really good and yeah once you take out the ranged units it's relatively easy to just lay down suppressive fire pretty much on every single person. They cannot do anything. And what's cool too is if uh, a little tip is if you hit each unit once, there's a good chance you'll start them to bleed. So if you see a bunch of people and you hit all of them once and then you run and hide, they'll start bleeding out. So you can use layerings of defensive that way to, you know, take a couple of shots, get them weak. And then two, if they're weak, when they come around the corner, they'll be that easier to one-shot because they're down to half health. But yeah, archer superiority, for me personally, seems the way to go. And just maybe one or two melee people. And of course, it's also really important to keep up with growing fields. I have carrots, beets, I have a ton of the berry bushes. And the berry bushes are the best food item in the game. Because their seed, their fruit is also the seed, whereas the other things you grow, you actually have to grow, you have to, to say if you want seed and the produce, and you have to make a, uh, you have to take a loss on the yield to get more seeds, but with the berries, it's just, your food can, easily replenishes the berry bushes, they're just so easy to maintain, and I, growing apple trees is also a really good thing to do, so if you get a merchant coming into town, buy apple seeds. And as promised... We have an example of the windowsill units and why I think they are awesome. You will see they don't have great shots out the front, but once they get through the front doors and they're in the sides, they're great. But what really makes the windowsill units stick out is how hard it is for the enemy to shoot you. So like I said, that makes up for the fact that you have limited visibility that you can only shoot what's in front of you. 
but you can see that it's allowing the archers to kind of like pick and choose um they're not getting sh what happens is is the enemies will all target the same target so if you have the regular defenses they can do that so 10 guys can attack one but with the window sills they cannot only two can attack one and you have superior defenses you're not getting hit and everything you're shooting is landing pretty much because you also have an increased modifier from shooting down so i accidentally just like i wasn't at first i thought okay the windowsill units is stupid but then i i realized when i got attacked by like 15 people and i was fighting in the windowsills and they my guys weren't dying that it was actually really good so I, I actually recommend using the window seals and you can see that the units are able to shoot inside without having to move because I have a window unit right next to them. So once they break in the door, all the units can start shooting. So yeah, the window sill tactic is actually very viable and very good. And um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty brutal. We rip, we rip these guys up a good, good amount. And so you can see we got a couple archers uh, that were dead now. And now that they're inside the inner area, we're hitting them from the side and they're getting really messed up. Um, and what I'm planning on doing is even making this defense crazier. That when they get through this area, there's going to be um, courtyards that can only be accessed from the tower. Like um, high rise, like tower and a courtyard in between, like a kill zone. It can only be accessed from the tower. Uh, so once they break through all those defenses, I'll have all of them run into a second defensive area where they can lay down a lot of fire. So I feel like I have a pretty good grasp of how I want to design this. And you can see right now I'm moving people into view of the new little kill zones. And what's great is that like about three people per two people per level it seems pretty efficient. And I also have space up top if uh, necessary, but... And then I have my melee people watching the doors if they do break through. And typically by the time they break through, they're like one shot away. Though the melee units tend to kick the crap out of them. Now you can see I tried to use the defensive structures on the inside as I was testing it, but I did find that the window units are the way to go. All right, cool. And we've killed everybody. All right, and then you can see we're getting most of the tower up. Now I've been messing around with thermal insulation, so I put a roof on it to see if I could keep more heat trapped however what i'm noticing is that the brick the the higher the thermal insulation actually the colder things are and the less heat, heat it absorbs from the outside it actually becomes a problem in that you actually have to use quite a bit of heating to keep the clay area like good i think this is why people are using two layers of clay for their cellars because it really keeps in the cold and then they're actually hard to heat knowing all that i would actually probably use something with less thermal insulation um if you want to get it heated up fast i know it sounds kind of counterintuitive but that's what i'm noticing is that the wood area is easier the wooden areas are much easier to heat than the brick um, so that's something I'm going to play with. I'm still going to do this all out of brick. Uh, you can increase the heat intensity of the braziers. The clay braziers, they go through fuel a little bit faster. But it's not bad. A full thing of fuel, which is sticks, lasts four and a half days. And to be honest, I got the donkeys. I got my donkey and I got a donkey from a merchant. Sorry. And I got the goat hauling stuff now. And I have so much sticks that I could heat things forever. But yeah, it's been really interesting trying to navigate this. Now I'm really stoked because we're finally getting in the last stages of the terraforming now. I got a lot filled in, I got a lot done, but there's still so much to do. All right, the terraforming is finally completed. We just need to remove the doors on the sides and everything in between. Dude, we piled so much resources. So we got 12,000 dirt, 7,700 limestone, 11,000 silver, ton of gold, ton of iron ingots, or sorry, iron ore, iron nuggets, iron ore, lots of wood. Um, so we have everything we need to build the base. Like I said, I haven't really been building any of the actual base out. Just purely been terraforming. So here's the deal is that I had a bunch of people arrive during all this terraforming. We now have 13 people. We desperately need to build more residentials and we'll be getting into that. We need to think about food. I'm actually thinking about doing all the farming on the side. We have to dig out our cellar to store food. Um, I'm probably going to do it in the middle here. Yeah, there's an immense amount to do. 
So let us begin getting the remaining parts of the terraforming completed. Excavating this, I got a little line over here. All I have to do is uh, undo a couple things over here, and we're good to go. So I actually need to remove these, but yeah, I'll just remove two tiles, and we will flood this whole, this whole valley. I'm going to keep things simple. This is going to be my drawbridge out of dirt, and what we'll do... Uh, to make it look nice is probably just file out the edges here um, and replace them with stone. And I'll just do stone lining on top of this. So, uh, limestone block. Yeah, we'll just do it like that. This will be the beginning drawbridge, but the only way up will be across this bridge with people shooting at them. And that should be pretty good. I don't think there's much visibility unfortunately for the windowed units here so we might actually have to destroy the tower and um, I'm gonna have to think here um, yeah that's one problem is that the the bridge bridge realistically needs to be level if but either have to replace it with a Merlin's here or I'm gonna have to think we can definitely do a lot of revamping but yeah I'm just gonna let them get all of this done we could even leave it as one tile if we wanted to make it even cheesier so that they go one at a time. But realistically, what I would want is the capacity to have everything centralized. Let's deconstruct. Let's deconstruct the whole tower and repurpose it now for this bridge. All right, perfect. We need to fill this water thing here so that it doesn't create a secondary waterfall. We want everything to be perfectly flat. We got plenty of dirt. We just need to go around making sure there's nothing letting people up on the wall here. It does look like we'll need to uh, terraform this out a little bit more. But for the most part, the design is ready. But I want to redesign everything around. Like I said, the windows will only shoot forward, so they wouldn't be able to hit this. So if we're going to have window units, that needs, they, need to, um, they need to align with this pathing, unfortunately. Just shy away from the window units and just have like a big, a big area here. Um, cause I can, uh, do stone steps and tons of things to make it really hard for them to get through. Now I could use traps. Um, problem with traps though is sometimes your own people run into them. So I'm gonna probably not even use traps, uh, cause I don't want my people stepping on that shit. It becomes quite, quite a problem actually to use these fences, these stone fences on the sides um, as a way to stop is a way to stop people from mobbing in and also just kind of give it that that look. So basically they'll be walking through this valley of death right here. And right now the, the moat's actually already working and we still have to do all the stone around the rest of the design here. So now we can get across but only one person at a time can run through here which will make it really easy for us to kick the crap out of them. So, of course, what we need here are doors. Um, we do want to use ri iron reinforced door here. Um, as many as we possibly can. We don't have that many. I would actually suggest that we just have a lot of doors here. And then we are going to use limestone here. And limestone here. Double thick, in case they bring siege equipment. Ooh, this does present a problem if they get stuck back here, though. All right, that's why we should get this up now. Just make sure no one gets stuck. All right, cool. So good door, good foundations. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about just putting all my archers. Cause let's see, what do we, what kind of range do we have here? We were up on the wall here. Shit. Carl got stuck. That's my fear. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is put a staircase here to help them get up into work. Alright. And we'll be designing the tower in the next episode for sure. Yeah, that's not your job. Um, so yeah, if he's over here and he's high up, he should be able to hit all the way back from here, so that's perfect. Um, so Carl, unfortunately, has screwed up everything. Should have built the first part out first, but hopefully, I'm hoping they can get on the roof and then build from up. I'm hoping they don't get stuck, but we're 
we're not going to fill the area with water until everything here is done. This, on the other hand, absolutely needs to be destroyed. But we should probably get the whole stone around the whole dang thing. Yeah, that's looking pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm liking that set up. And then, like I said, I'm probably... Like, the windows are cool, but they're, they're limited. And what we're probably going to end up doing is just using a very simplified awesomeness to to do all of this um yeah once we once we get everything up i'll i'll do one line at a time but i think i'm just gonna have merlins around the whole front and just let the full force of my archers just unwind on people uh, they shouldn't be able to bulk hit my people with the way we're doing this this setup yeah, this is gonna be a beefy a beefy castle wall and we need to get this up so they can walk on top of this easier. Um, now we'll do it and I want to get this up and then we'll do the perimeter and then we'll see what we have. We have enough. I think we have enough limestone to make pretty much everything we need. And that's another good thing to point out is that there are times where it's freezing cold. So what I'll do is I'll create warmer rooms like on the back side, where I have a small room with, you know, fires in it near your defenses. Because when you're hit by a blizzard and you're attacked, your people will freeze to death. So. What I do is I keep them in, in rooms until the combat engages, and then I throw them out. Another good thing about the rooms is you can extract people from the battlefield into them if they get hurt. So really good to have that. We're also going to be building um, the infirmary probably like right here on this bottom floor. Um, so yes, we need to build an infirmary on the bottom floor here so that people can go straight to the infirmary once the combat's over. Um, so this whole bottom floor right here is going to be an infirmary. And we can actually do a lot of that now. Um, let's just do it like this. Okay. All right, cool. And that will be the game in the next episode. So unfortunately, yeah, we're not going to do any of the, the water just yet. Because we want to get the basic defenses up and the wall done. Wall completely done and then flood it. Because it will be a lot harder for us to get outside. Uh, once all that is done, accidentally put there. Cool. So we have all of this sealed off from the outside. And I, I want these stairways so people can run around the edges. That's no problem. And it looks like people do not have clothing for winter. Even though I have it on making clothing. And then we can focus on all the stuff we've been neglecting. Oof, so much, so much stuff. Yeah, I have winter clothes produced until there's X here. But now that there's freaking 13 people, definitely have excess clothing. Um, I'm thinking about tearing the farming down here and putting it on the sides. We have we have so much to do. We need to dig a cellar. Yeah, there's. But first, we need to get our defenses and our infirmary up. So defenses, infirmary, outer perimeter wall, uh, terraform the mode in, and then we're gonna focus on religious buildings, libraries, research. I've actually neglected that stuff at in pretty extreme amounts. Like, there's not a lot of it. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching.